What's going on, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Los Chingones Podcast with your host, Ray Gonzalez. Oscar Benitez. And we got two different special guests today. We got a uh, third co-host. Frankie's not here today. We replaced him it's with uh, Samuel. 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 <laughs> Sam. Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam right here. Uncle Sam. Okay. And then uh, our special guest that we got today, we have some interesting topics that we want to uh, talk about. I feel like this has been popping a lot uh, on my TikTok and Instagram, and it does not leave me alone. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> it's a message that we have that we need to talk about. And uh, I was able to find Catherine here that can help us with that. And I feel a lot of people out there are going to be very interested in this and uh, learn a lot about themselves from this uh, podcast. So, Catherine, let people know who you are, what you do. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name's Catherine. I'm the podcast host of Chakras and Cuss Words. Um, I center on a lot of astrology, the chakra system, tarot. Um, I'm a chakra certified life coach, as one might say. And I do a lot of astrology birth chart readings, tarot readings, and um, I'm also a meditation and intuitive guide for the Aura app, which um, is a platform that releases uh, guided meditations for people to help relieve some of that chakra energy. Mm. Chakra. Mm. Chakra, chakra. Chakra. The chocolate. Okay, chocolate. The chocolate energy? <laughs> Put the chocolate down. No, no, so uh, how does a person... I guess I don't say become this, but how did you like? How how did this all happen? Yeah, how did this all happen? Like, I know you didn't wake up one day and said, "No, I see things." You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Is that how it works? Or like, did you read this? Like, did you got interested in this? Start reading books, or like, how did this? How how did this happen? So how did it start? Well, so I have a pretty, um, I guess you could say, kind of different life. Um, I was born with a heart condition called uh, transposition of the great vessels. So at the age of about 11 months, I had to have open heart surgery, and I actually, um, my heart did a little, you know, stop right there. And so I have always been centered around spirituality, what happens to the soul after it leaves this capsule. So that's kind of like always been something that I've always been looking into ever since like a young age. Probably like the first book I bought at the age of 13 was an astrology book and a witchcraft book. <laughs> and that's Whoa. just kind of like how I roll, right? Oh, oh, oh. Harry Potter? Well, was it Harry Potter books? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm all about learning about the elements, the universe, and um, tapping into areas of energy. And the two most dominant energies that I see are astrology and the chakra system. Okay, okay. Let's talk about the chakra system okay. <laughs> for chakra. sure. Yeah. So we all, yeah, we, all, we all know it's like a, there's a few different chakras in your body and everything needs to be aligned together. It's like a needs to be spinning correctly. Yeah, so and uh, how does how does someone know like <laughs> if they're off balance or what can cause that and how do you fix that? Like So the the chakra system is is very deep. It's not just like um a you know oh my chakras are unaligned i need to get my chakras un you know un um blocked a lot of times people don't really understand the chakra system is a lifestyle just like fitness is a lifestyle just like healthy eating is a lifestyle just like um getting up and having a job it's a lifestyle how do you manipulate and work with the energy that you have how do you work with that energy that you receive from the universe, you receive from society, you receive from other people, really determines by your own chakra alignment. So the chakras actually go back to um, ancient times. In um, It started off in India, and it's really popular with the Hindi population, with the Hindu community, and it's almost like their area of religion. So what happened was, um, I think his name was Carl Jung. He was a philosopher, psychotherapist back in like the 1930s, was traveling the world looking at the way the mind works, the way that energy works, and he picked up (coughs) the chakra philosophy, brought it back to the Western areas, right? And he basically, then they started practicing it in yoga, Like you would hear a lot of people say, this yoga pose is for your root chakra and this yoga pose is for your heart chakra and we're opening up 
and letting that area release. So a lot of people think that the chakras are only blocked or they're not aligned. But the reason why the chakras aren't aligned is because there's different elements of each chakra. The chakra could either be blocked, depleted, or excessive. And when you have an excessive chakra, that's almost like you have too much energy in that space. And there's seven main chakras. We all have seven main chakras, and they all come from the root to the top of the head. And there's chakras in the hands, but those aren't the ones that I work with. I work with just the seven main. And that's your root chakra, which is down right at like your tailbone area. Then you have, um, and that's your area of foundation and safety. So a lot of people who maybe suffer from anxiety, who have like anxiety attacks, they might have an imbalanced root chakra. Then you have your sacral chakra, which is your area of confidence. And it's your area of like passion, desire. And that's right around your reproductive organs. So somebody who might have an imbalance in their sacral chakra, it might be excessive where maybe they have like a sex addiction or they're always hooking up with random chicks, right? Because they're on this area of this excessive energy and they're yeah. like, I got to get it out. I got to get it out. I got to do my thing, right? Or you have Sam, somebody you? who has... <laughs> I'm thinking I'm right? Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> or you have somebody who has a depleted sacral chakra where they're like, I don't want, I don't want to be touched. Leave me alone. I'm tired. Get out of here. Yeah. So you see these imbalances in relationships. And then let's say you have, and then you have your solar plex, which your solar plex is your area of power. And each chakra has its own element. And your solar plex is your fire energy. That's your area that gets you up and gets you moving in the right direction, gets you saying, hey, I can take this step. I can do something. I can, you know go back to school, I could start my own business, I can um, reach new heights. It's your, it's your power of like really that, that strength and that willpower. Kind of like that motivation. like That, that motivation, area. right. So like sometimes you'll hear people will say, I've been thinking about doing something. Oh, I should do this. I want to do this. Or maybe it's time that I start like my own clothing line. I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about it. Let's say they're thinking about it for years, right? but they don't ever initiate it. Their solar plex is either depleted or blocked. So it's never going forward. Then you have your heart chakra, which is your area of love, trust, and also your area of wealth and money when we look at it. Because in all honesty, it comes with a lot of boundaries when you are dealing with the heart and when you are dealing with areas of money and income. And if you don't have certain boundaries and certain areas of trust, that energy isn't going to be aligned. Then you have your throat chakra, which um, is something that we're tapped into right now, right? All of you guys have an open throat chakra because you're saying your core message, you're expressing um, through creativity of your podcast, what you're doing, and you're bringing your message to others. And the way we receive our core message is also how we receive energy from others. So not only do we have an open throat chakra, but we're also listening to the messages of the people. The, you know, he's saying, I see on TikTok, there's a lot of zodiacs and astrology yeah. stuff going. So people are into this. People are asking yeah, about yeah. this. So I got to get somebody on my podcast yeah. who can talk about this, right? So he's listening to the core message of the community, of his collective. So that's the throat chakra. Then you have your third eye chakra, which is your area of intuition. And a lot of us, <laughs> a lot of us, when we hear the third eye, we think, oh my gosh, it's like psychic downloads everywhere. Like, you know, and I just can't um, close it. And people who do have an excessive third eye probably have areas of trauma, areas of PTSD, where they have nightmares, headaches, mm. um, visions, right? And that could also be related to some mental health issues as well. But people who have an aligned third eye usually get an intuition where they can trust it and they move forward with it and it guides them and it lets them know like, yes, you are right. Say it. Or yes, you are right. Do it. So it all goes up to the crown. And once you get to the crown chakra, that's like 
your unconscious state of your conscious state. That's saying that the universal energy is bringing this energy alignment to you at a natural flow. You've already established everything in your root, your sacral, your solar plex, your heart, your throat, and your third eye. And now you are trusting the universe to guide you because the universe sees you and you see the universe. So that is basically the chain of the chakras. Do people come to you to basically help them balance out their yeah. chakras? Yeah. And like, what's your approach on that? How long would you say it would take for so, someone to get that balance? <laughs> so it depends on like what's going on with the individual. So yeah. that's something that I, you know, talk to them about, kind of get like an assessment. Is it mostly related to the relationship? Is it related to they're not completing their goals? Is it related to like they're depressed? Mm -hmm. They, they have maybe a excessive root chakra where they're extremely comfortable. Now you have to think about it like a plant, right? Have you ever seen a plant who's been in a pot for a very long time? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And those roots are just fucking growing. stuck, mm -hmm. right? They're yeah. just stuck on that pot. And you're trying to like, okay, I'm going to repot this plant. But this plant is so comfortable that it's stuck in this pot and it doesn't want to move. So you got to break that fucking pot. And then once you break the pot, you can let the roots grow. You can expand the roots and put it in a bigger pot. So some people, they're so comfortable that they have this excessive root chakra that they don't want to ever feel uncomfortable. And one of the most times that we actually grow is in those uncomfortable moments. So sometimes it's kind of understanding like what chakra it is and what state is that chakra in? And if that chakra is excessive, then we usually know there's another chakra that's probably depleted. So somebody who has an excessive root chakra, right? That area is so excessive, they don't want to. They don't. They don't want to move. They don't want to change. They. They. Th that's how they are. Their solar plex, which is their power chakra that energy where they take that initiative is probably depleted because all that energy is going into the roots. Mm -hmm. And then that energy is not making them, not allowing them to take the next step because they're just idle. You said the solar plex um, chakra is the one that if you have a, a goal that you've been saying you're going to do and you keep on saying you're going to do it and you don't do it, that's related then. Yes. So awesome. usually, usually the solar plex chakra, and there's probably reasons why the solar plex isn't being initiated. And that could be around the root or the sacral. Um, it could be areas of having anxiety where if I start this, what if I fail? What if you never start it? Right. You know, how would you know if you failed if you never started it, right? You might succeed. You might freaking... But the solar plex doesn't get initiated unless the other chakras are bringing energy to it. Starting with the root. Starting, most everything starts with the root. We develop our areas of um, insecurities and a lot of our areas of safety in childhood. So you were talking about the third eye also, uh, mm -hmm. like if you have a very active uh, mm -hmm. dream, you know? Yeah. That's a very active uh, third eye, right? But what's the opposite of that? Like, if you have no dreams, is you that a blocked? Dream. You don't dream. Yeah, I'm, that's like me. I don't really dream. You don't really dream. I don't really ever dream. So what is that? What so, imbalance? <laughs> I'm <talking about. laughs> it, I mean, do you meditate? No, I'm always go, go, go. And right, I can never. Exactly. That's one thing I was talking about the last podcast or one of the last podcasts I was talking about, like, unwinding. It's very so, hard for me to unwind. Meditation, and this is something that people... Because meditation is very different. There's different types of meditation. Like everybody thinks I have to just stay, stay still, and, oh, yeah. you know, meditate like this. And that's not necessarily true. There's grounding where you take your shoes and your socks off and you get in the soil and you get those natural elements of the earth and you sit there with the universe and you sit there with those elements and you listen to the sounds of the universe. And 
that's a form of meditation. Um, some people shouldn't meditate. There's some people who have very um, vibrant dreams. I don't meditate a lot. I I already have a, pretty close to a extremely open third eye where I don't, in all honesty, I don't meditate. Um, I do do grounding because it brings me back down a little bit. But when you start to meditate, you start to tap into the unconscious mind. The mind of basically what the soul's energy is saying to you and what the spirit energy is saying to you. So when you become one with that energy and you kind of break it where it's like open, sometimes the dreams get very vivid, very vivid. And, and I'll talk to people and they'll say, my dreams are extremely, oh my gosh, I literally jumped out of my bed. Yeah, because like, I know people that have detailed dreams, and I'm like, right. they're like explaining everything. Yes, I'm like, how do you even yeah, know this? Yeah, how? I like that. I don't that's even how my dreams mine. are. Like, yeah, I've had dreams either. where, like, I've literally felt somebody <clears throat> grab me out of bed, Damn. and like, you know, and was that a dream? Was my soul traveling? Was my spirit in another dimension? Yeah, that's another thing who, I was going to ask. Who because. knows? Was that a demon? <laughs> <laughs> right? It wasn't it? I mean, and if we're going to talk about like spirit energy. We can talk a little bit about that, but I'm not a medium. So yeah. um, so basically, I came to the conclusion was I got to cut back on the meditation, and that's what I did. And then the dreams became less as vivid. So you probably, if you want to start to dream, you should probably try to meditate. Is that good for you to dream, though? Like, is, I mean, like, you meditate, you dream. Is that good? Like, is that some, it depends. That, if it depends. you don't dream. So, like, like me, like what? I said, I don't dream right. at all. I don't ever really? remember dreams. So, it's like... <laughs> Never. I like yeah, dreams. Never. I mean, never. I, I, I could say that there's been a few times I have had dreams, yeah. but it's like maybe like I could count a handful if that. Yeah. I. It depends. You know, for some people, it doesn't bother them that they don't dream. Um, I would, you know, I would ask you, how do you feel like with your intuition? Do you feel like your, your energy state that where you're at, like you are making intuitive decisions or do you feel like people are kind of like blindsiding you no i feel good okay. i feel very confident in myself right. and who i am and I, who i stand for and what right. i do so i'm not really worried about right. anything so like i said as, as a man i'm very secure of who i am yeah. so i i don't think that, i mean maybe meditating just to relax myself like i right. said and 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 that's the thing is meditation is supposed to be a form of clearing the mind right clearing the mind of that mm -hmm. excessiveness and sometimes um we'll start to hear like um, like messages or the mind won't shut up, right? And it's like, well, what is the unconscious trying to tell us? You know, is it like, check this because you're, you know, holding on to something that maybe needs to be checked or looked back at. Um, for some people, you know, dreaming isn't a big deal. Um, it just kind of depends on that person. For some people, they do need to tap the dreams down. And then that's when I would refer them to like grounding or um, eating more root-based foods because okay. most of their chakras are probably activated. The higher chakras mm. are very activated. I, I like the fact that about the grounding, like I feel like I should do that because come back down feet on the, the feet, earth, yeah, feet on the <laughs> ground, on the, on, the, on the dirt over there, the <laughs> sun touching my skin. <laughs> well, the sun too, right? You want the yeah. sun to, you know. The sun, yeah, the sun has many like natural property a lot of times i feel like we don't spend right. too much time outside yeah anymore, right. so. and the sun energy is the massive energy that's like when the sun is in your season like you hear it's like your birthday season your zodiac it is hit with the sun season you'll see a lot of people will have stuff going on and it feels like ooh, what's going on what's going on it's because that sun energy is right in their first house it's their solar return so it's their energy mm. of the sun giving them another year of life. So how do you, again, going back to the chakra stuff, how do you know if you're in balance, like you just have an imbalance? Like let's say someone has an imbalance somewhere, like you would just like, I don't know, which one's a complicated right. one to, to understand? Like which one would be one of the I mean, in all honesty, um, and especially, I mean, I think it goes for everybody. I feel like the root chakra the sacral and the solar plex okay. should always be the chakras that we look the at main, the most. Okay. The main ones. 
Because those mess with your, everything else. Because those are really, I mean, it, and you'll see there are people who maybe they, they're they okay with everything else, right? They're, they're, they feel safe at home or they're safe. They don't have anxiety. They're able to make new decisions. They're able to make change. And um, they have passion and they have creativity. But somewhere in their heart chakra, then you see a lot of weak boundaries. So how do you... But then it goes back to the root chakra. Okay. Well, the reason why your boundaries are very weak is because you are actually fearful of being alone. Mm. So it all goes back to the first three. So someone that has a fear of being alone, how would you help them balance that? Like say that that, that was their problem. I would do like... Get a dog. In all honesty, <laughs> I would do... Yeah. That way, if people are watching, right. there might I be like, would, oh, that's me. Like, how can I? What's right. a good example of something you could, they can take home yeah. and be like, okay, well. And, this- and I'll be honest. So if you, are, if you are fearful of being uncomfortable and you are fearful of, like, being alone, then those are the things you need to accomplish. You need to be uncomfortable. You need mm. to go outside and stand in the ground for about, like, five minutes And be uncomfortable and use that self-awareness like, hey, right now I'm uncomfortable. This doesn't feel good. I'm cold. My feet are cold. I'm shivering. But I only got 10 more minutes. And you're going to (laughs) live. Believe it or not, you're going to live. You're going to survive, right? And you'll have that initiative. Uh, Yes, I did it. I completed this. This small 10-minute goal I was able to complete. Even though I was so uncomfortable and I hated it every minute of it but i completed it and <coughs> and now i'm a you know i i acknowledge that and and also something that i would tell somebody who's fearful of being alone is what is it about being alone that brings you anxiety what is it that you fear mm. is it the silence is it not having anybody to talk to is it you know, what is it like? And, and we see a lot of this, like with relationships, right? Like you see a lot of people are literally from one relationship to another relationship. And it's like, at what point between these two relationships did you stop and was just alone? Just alone with the inner soul and the inner spirit to see what does your soul desire. And it's crazy because I feel like a lot of people are, like you said, afraid to be alone, but they they haven't spent time alone. Right. Like, it's like you're always with someone. It's like the moment you're alone, it's like you freak out. And it's like, dude, you got you got to, right. it's good to be alone. It's good to. And there's, and there's, Part there's the a few process. things that people think they can't live without. Right. <laughs> and a lot of people live without them. And those two are money and love. Some people are not in relationships. They've never been in long-term relationships. And they have a lot of self-love or they don't have this fear of being alone. And they're very happy with their life. They're very content in their life. Have you ever met like a 90-year-old grandma and her husband died and then she never remarried? Yeah. And it's been like 30 or 40 years. Yep. Mm-hmm. but she's happy yeah is there such a thing though also being too comfortable and being alone you know oh yeah because like, yeah, yeah, at, yeah. at some point you gotta you you may be comfortable in a relationship right right and that's the reason why you can't stop being in them even though right. you end them and then you don't take that that time to heal mm-hmm. or grow mm-hmm. or whatever you want to call it And then there's also the comfort zone of being by yourself for a really long time Mm -hmm. and having, you want nobody messing that space up. Right. And that's, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? If your inner soul is saying, I'm fine. I don't need nobody. As long as you're happy. As long as you're happy and you're like, I'm cool. (laughs) You know, I, I'm, I'm cool. good. Thanks. I'm good. I feel like shit happens you unexpected. Know? So, like, if you and are that person, I don't alone, have nobody asking me where I'm going. I don't have go. anybody <laughs> asking me, you know, questions. What I'm That's doing? Awesome. I make my own life decisions. Yeah. I do exactly what I want to do. When I feel, yeah. I get areas of gratitude from other 
other people, like my friends. I get areas Mm -hmm. of affection from different areas. I'm good. And if you're solely good and you feel it in your heart, like, yeah, I'm good. Then, then the time will come when you will receive that energy as, okay, maybe I want a companion. Maybe I want somebody to be around me. Maybe I want to travel the world and I don't want to travel the world alone. Mm. Oscar. Good dog. <laughs> so then that will come up, right? That's why and I got a sure dog. About to get married next and, week. It, and then you get into this whole energy of like soulmates, right? And like soulmates, like what is a soulmate, right? Well, like, there's a thing I heard a soulmate that I heard twin flames too. Yeah, like, so a twin flame is different and, than a soulmate. So a soulmate doesn't necessarily have to be the person you are with the rest of your life. You, you can have soulmates who are friends. Right. Like you can have like your best friend is your soulmate somewhere, maybe in a different lifetime, a different dimension. Those souls have already entwined. They've already (laughs) developed like almost like a pathway back to each other. Right. And that's really that energy of like the soulmate. Um, And you can have multiple soulmates. There's. There's nothing in life saying that you have one soulmate and that's it. There might be soulmates that are there to bring you energy for different things versus energy that you give them for different things, right? And it's not necessarily a romantic uh, soulmate. Right. It doesn't necessarily have to be romantic, right? It's just somebody who is in that life who you have this soul bond with. So you feel like when you meet someone and you just have this instant connection with them, Mm -hmm. whether it's the opposite sex or not, like it just, like I said, it's not camp. It doesn't have to be romantic. It just be like, we just feel like we know each other. We get along well. It's like that deja vu. It's like you're aligned with each other. Connection. You're aligned together. The soul's energy feels this tied. And when you get into like life contracts and like people who are into like past lives and um, how many times have, you know, I've been on this planet versus what am I here to learn about the soul's contract or whatnot um you'll see that people will say that some souls continue to relive together right like you'll see like um people who might like read um the kashic records which is something that not many people know about but they'll read like this reading where it's an energy of the ancestral past of the of the contracts of the life of the spirit. And they'll say, well, this in your past life, this person right here that you're referring to in your past life was actually like your brother. But now this person is coming back as your dad. Or your friend, right? Or your friend, Mm. right? So you see that these souls still are entwined together. Interesting. Do you think, um, like I know you've mentioned something in different dimensions. So do you think there's like different... (laughs) <laughs> different like me's and you's uh, like spider-man we do like different, yeah, different yeah. dimensions your, uh, your mom yeah. Alice? yeah right. i do i i think that um you know i if you were like if you were to ask me do i believe we all go to heaven after we die um I don't know, necessarily believe that, like, oh, we're going to all go to heaven and then it's going to be, like, this fabulous place and, like, hey, you know. I don't necessarily believe that. I believe that the soul's energy is basically where we're at right now. So this this universe, this lifetime that we're in right now, technically could be our heaven. Mm. The, mm. You know, how do we make this life abundant to us and beautiful to us? You know, so it... I do think that there are dimensional things. Um, you know, I do believe in like um, areas of reincarnation. Um, I do believe in areas of um, chapters of living within your life and maybe closing a chapter, not completing what your soul's destiny was to do. So now you have to go reincarnate. Re- try that bad boy out one more time yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, yeah, yeah. see if you get it right yeah, this yeah. time okay so you how know? about like bad you know bad en- like these bad huh? energy bad energy or like um, ghosts so what do you think of like that? ghosts so well, i mean i think I, I well bad energy saying bad energy doesn't have to say be ghosts or, but i think it like yeah. bad energy is like you can go into a room and feel like i know i don't need to be right. here i need to get the right. out of here yeah. right. or like this is where i want to be at right i felt the vibe and i feel like i'm very 
I guess, in tune with that because right. I deal with a lot of people. I'm motivating them. I'm right. inspiring them. So I feel like if someone's off, like they're being weird, I can sense you it. Can like, tell. yeah, you're you not. Can tell, like, or if someone, yeah, on. or if someone's yeah. being cool, like, like this is this is a, a good person I want to be around. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know if everybody's like that or if it's just well, something that is that part of your third eye intuition yes. right yes so that is part of your intuition so like your intuition kind of gives you that energy where it like speaks to you right like you ever hear of like somebody who maybe who knows like let's say okay like let's say they're dark energy they're dark en like energy right Fanny. and on the outside, everybody sees them as like camera. They're Two. they're great, right? But there's one person that's like, mm, I don't know about this person. I just have this weird vibe about them. Mm -hmm. I just have this really, really weird feeling, and they trust that and they stay away. Mm. And then they find out this person like scammed all their friends. They're like, yeah, they scammed you guys. They yeah. scam me because I listened to my third yeah. eye. I so said, that's okay. pretty much has to do with your third eye. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Interesting. On that, still on the third eye, uh, for some reason it interests me a lot. You're trying to like, open it. That's why. <laughs> like, <laughs> kind of like this. Kind of like just woke up. And you just, <laughs> you just tap it. Some visine. It's like Doctor Strange. He gets the third one. <laughs> um, deja vu and like having that feeling, like you, obviously deja vu, but like when you're in a dream uh, yeah. and then you're. You're like, I know I've done this before. Is that kind of mm -hmm. like your spirit? You're mm -hmm. like walking. That's the unconscious. Okay. Right. right. That's the mm -hmm. unconscious, like somehow giving you a message or something, you know, going on. Kind of um, giving you an opportunity to do it over. Right. And I would ask, way. and I would ask you like if, because I do do a lot with like, um, reading about dreams, learning about dreams. Um, people talk to me a lot about their dreams. Um, it's something that. Um, because I've, t I've talked a lot about dreams on my, um, like Instagram and stuff like that. I haven't done like a podcast on dreams yet, but, um, a lot of it, I would ask you like, who was in the dream? Mm. What were you doing in the dream? How did you feel in the dream? Were you scared? Were you happy? Were you nervous? Did you feel like the dream was trying to give you a message or was your mind and spirit just exploring? Right. So, I mean, like it, it could depend, you know? Um, and then the third eye will tell you like a lot of stuff, um, subconsciously, you know, the mind will just tell you like, for instance, I have an owl in the, my backyard and, um, and for a long time, like the owl. So during the 4th of July, the owl kind of like kicked rocks. He was like, I gotta get out of here. Uh, talking about you, you have a real owl? Yeah, there's a real owl. It's like your pet owl? No. It oh, it just in, comes. It lives in a tree and it comes to me. Oh, so it always comes. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the one from Harry Potter. I was going to say it's a Harry Potter one. Yeah. Oh, so you have a legit <laughs> owl that comes to you. Yeah, yeah. My 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 now, Instagram followers and my uh, podcast listeners are like, oh, shit, here she goes talking about this damn owl again. Okay. Well, do because, you have a name for your owl? No, because like I'll be like on the treadmill and yeah. he'll just fly his little ass down yeah. and be like, what you doing, girl? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then I'll like get record him yeah. and then he'll like chill for a second and then he'll fly away. What was but the owl's name? Hedwig? <laughs> Hedwig. Yeah. I don't know. But so I have an owl and like a lot of times, sometimes, I mean, it's not my owl. It's not my pet owl, but I haven't seen the owl in a long time. Mm. Right. Since like 4th of July. And then I was just thinking like the other day. I wonder if that owl's still alive. <laughs> you know, I was like, I wonder what happened to that owl. So literally last night, he's fucking back. And he's it like hooing like crazy. Podcast. And he's like, whoo, whoo. And then he's like jumping. I, and I was like, I think this fool's trying to break into the house because that. he's like on our like little thing where solar is and he's making all kinds of noise. And I'm like, I could barely sleep last night. And then I'm dreaming of him. And is it like, what color? Is it like a... Okay. It's a brown owl. Okay. So not, I, I don't know. I've heard like owls. Is it good or bad? Or, I don't so know. that's like a big superstition. Yeah, yeah my mom. Superstition. My mom just the other day said, hey, there was an owl howling or ooing, mm -hmm. hooing right, uh, right who, next who? to the window. <laughs> right. And she was like, it's it's one of the superstitions, Mexican that, superstitions, right. you know. Or, that that is like what? death that is will bad? come. Yeah, like it's bad. That's how they're portrayed, like I guess. Dark. Huh? That's how they're portrayed, I guess. Well, because they're a creature of the night. 
right? And that's yeah. and that's the thing that a lot of people, like when we talk about the shadow elements or the spooky elements or, you know, I, I said witch and everybody was like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, shit. Podcast off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, oh, yes. right? You know, I like, so, you know, yeah. so it's like, and everybody gets so, like, tone death like oh you know it's scary it's bad it's this it's that it's dark we all have elements of dark in us right we all have elements of shadow we all have the elements demons. we have of, good and bad right we all have that energy right there's times that we have to look at our own shadow which is our own energy of darkness and say like this is what i respect about you like maybe you cut people off quick you leave 10 girls on red and awesome. you don't think twice about it. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> so <laughs> we have to acknowledge that certain aspect about us. Right. And maybe I like that because that protects me. I don't get hurt, but is that hurting somebody else? Right. So it's our own energy. And how are we dealing with this shadow aspect? How are we dealing with this dark energy? And a lot of times the way that, um, most of like traditional Christian households were taught was to label it as ev evil, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yes, there's evil energies, definitely. But just because something can't be explained to you or you don't fully understand it doesn't necessarily mean that it's evil. Yeah, and I think that can be applied in all aspects of life, you know? Right, yeah. right. Because, for example... Uh, Parents want you to be a doctor, this, that, and the other, but you right. become a mechanic or a construction worker, you know? And yeah. for them, it was, hey, don't do that. You can do something better, you know, but right. it's not necessarily what you like a bad thing, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the, I mean, and when we talk about, like, spirit animals and um, messages from animals, uh, a lot of it comes from superstition, like spiders you know, creatures of the night, creatures of the dark, the owl. Um, but the owl, owl, in all honesty, stands for a lot of wisdom, guidance, um, and areas of seeking and receiving clarity. So a lot of times, if you see an owl, instead of saying, oh my gosh, there's an owl outside. It's an omen. And it's an omen. No, yeah. I remember and owl now, flew over. Like one time I left the gym, it was nighttime and <laughs> uh -huh. I, I was, nobody's here. It was, I closed the gates and I look up and it's like, a, I think it was a white owl just flew over. And I was like, oh, <laughs> right. get He's in all, my car. He's all, <laughs> right? He ran into yeah. the car. <laughs> right. So just ask, like yeah. when something like that happens, that's, you know, you think like, what is the universe sending me? What message am I trying to receive? I'm going to Hogwarts. And, and then you would ask yourself, what areas? Get the like, card. And you would acknowledge it. Like, I see the owl. I, you know, respect you. I appreciate you. What energy are you sending towards me? I thought it was cool. Like, you I know, never see, like, I rarely see owls. So when you see one, I'm like, oh, it's kind of right. cool. Yeah. What energy, yeah. what areas of wisdom do you want to gain? And that's funny because I, I make ritual candles. And one of my ritual candles is owl. Mm. Okay, okay. What are ritual candles? So, <laughs> so ritual candles, I mean, are areas where everything you do has an intention. It's a ritual, right? So, for instance, you know, it's not like your bath and body candles, right? <laughs> you know, you get a candle, and with that candle, you create an intention. So, like, for the owl, I would create an intention towards wisdom, acknowledgement and further areas of guidance so is there like certain ingredients in that candle that you make that has like <laughs> no it's okay. actually it's a little it's an owl it's an actual owl so owl I, I, I have a mole oh and then you okay oh, but as far okay, as the okay. smell of the counter oh, do the you put smell? So, yeah like what do you put in it that's it's yeah, like a certain I, mean, I could like if i really wanted to get like no just asking because i don't know if it was like it mattered what you put in the candle or just just the candle oh. is the candle. It's supposed yeah. to be some smells. It depends on like how. I don't know, know. It was like lavender or something that makes it better. It depends on what your practice is, okay. what your modalities okay. are. You know, okay. like some. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you ever seen like. Um, so you're almost doing like affirmations like, in that candle, like a ritual. Correct. Like every day you're going to do this to this candle. Correct. Say these 
Like right. you said, the owl right. it means uh, wisdom. Wisdom. So you're right. trying to right. repeat this to yourself, and right. it's 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 now it's like you have something you like. Okay, I'm gonna do this every day. I'm gonna do this every day, and then at yeah. some point it's going to come. Kind to of like looking at yourself in the mirror in the morning and saying, mm-hmm. uh, "I'm a good person." Yeah. This is what I'm capable of. It's just a different form of it. Form of it's it. just okay. a different form. Yeah. Okay. You know, some people like affirmations. Some people like, you know, ritual candles. Some people, it just depends on what you like, mm. right? And then that's like when we get into like. So we're, we're all, we're all going to need a candle. What kind mm. of candle do we need? There's different types of candles. <laughs> I, have, yeah, I, have, I have a lot. Yeah. Oh, so we'll have to talk about what candles we need. Oscar, what do you need? <laughs> what do you need? Yeah. What do I, I need? Oscar myself, needs a love candle. I have like, yeah, I have some. And can, how can people, can people, and obviously people can buy these candles from you or do you just, I mean. They okay, can. Okay. Yeah. I, I've like, sold, I, I don't have them on my website, okay, okay. you know. Coming to a Bed Bath and Beyond near you. <laughs> yeah, they're not Bed Bath yeah. and Beyond. I, I forgot to ask, like, how long did it take you to develop those skills on like the chakra thing? Like, a few your years. Practices. Yeah. A few years. A few years. Okay. Okay. Now, last thing, so we can move away from the chakras and go with the zodiacs, as we've been yeah. on. We could be there for <laughs> <Yeah>. three hours. <laughs> yeah, so, we can. Yeah, so yeah. this is this is, a, this is the last thing. So. Obviously, what would happen if you just never balance your chakras? If you just you're so excessive on one or so depleted on one, you just never balance them. <laughs> you're gonna what lose if, it. <laughs> it. Yeah. So we would like look at the chakra that is like excessive, right? So usually people who have unbalanced chakras or unbalanced um, issues where they're not living in their pure energy alignment. Pretty you much someone that's always negative. Right. Like you could tell it, that they're yeah, off. You would see they were like negative. They probably have multiple, multiple failed relationships. Um, and then they would be depressed about it. Or depending like if they were um, excessively, um, <laughs> excessively um, in Optimistic. the crown or the third eye, then they might have areas of like joining a cult. Right. Mm. That's why I say like meditation's not for everybody, right? Or they would be like just they couldn't determine the everything was, you know, very spiritual, or they would probably think that they were like Jesus or you know, whatever. Yeah. They had like an excessive crown chakra or third Jesus? eye. They think they're Jesus like Kanye. <laughs> like Kanye, yeah. <laughs> Kanye has a lot of excessiveness. Mm. His mm. chakras are very unaligned. Mm. Um, he, and it, but he also has some mental illness too, okay, okay. which is more than just a Reiki session. <laughs> all right, all right. So those that feel like you have a lot of negativity in you, you just feel down, something's going on and you know, right. something's off. I mean, maybe look into your chakras and see what it yeah. is and find someone like Catherine that can help you with that. Um, so now let's go into the Zodiacs. Cause I feel like a lot of that <laughs> is mainly what's been popping up with my stuff. Like I'm an Aquarius Oscar. What are you? Wait, can you get, can you kind of guess? Or you would have to kind of get to know I, the person, I, right? For I feel well. like I already know that you're an Aries. Okay. Well, so what is that? You're Virgo. Uh, yeah, Victoria. I already told her yes. But she yeah. picked you. She said you were yeah, Earth sign. Yeah, yeah sign. I knew air he was an Earth sign. Right? You know, air you're Earth. Earth. He's air. Okay. And you're an Aquarius you're too. And you're an Aquarius too, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what is the difference between Earth, Air, Fire? So... So astrology is like, astrology is really deep. It's big. It's different types of astrology. There's Vedic. I go off of tropical astrology. That's um, the energy that I use. So when we are thinking about astrology, it's basically a wheel in the sky, right? And each planet has its own representation. And then there's 12 zodiacs, which we all are, like, you're so your Virgo, Aquarius, Aries, Aquarius. So when a planet shifts to that alignment, that's when you'll hear like, oh, you know, my Saturn is in Capricorn or my Saturn is, you know, I'm going through my Saturn um, return or whatnot. Um, and then there's also energy alignments that happen every day, right? Like, um, astrologers will look at and see what the planets are doing um there's conjunctions there's sextiles there's squaring there's trines so each energy of each planet creates an energy alignment and it usually will affect either the collective which is all of us on a world front or 
it could affect us individually. Or sometimes it doesn't even affect us at all, right? So what astrologers usually like to do is go and look at the astrology for like the week or the month, and they begin to make predictions like, okay, so we have the Pluto, you know, Pluto return was back in February. It was 2-22-22, right? And a lot of astrologers like, oh, making these huge, we know Pluto's coming back, something's going to happen. And what happened was like, Russia invaded Ukraine. So an astrologer will make a note of that somewhere in a book, right? And like Nostradamus was an astrologer. Mm. A lot of people go off of the patterns of the sky. So what are the cosmos doing? And that's how they determine what will happen with like certain individuals or certain events. That's how they predict, right? Some, yeah. some, And then you have like just psychics who just predict shit. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. That's so Raven people. Yeah. 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 yeah they just so like so, <laughs> what is like, like Earth, Air, Water, or the okay, fire? So like what does all have, that mean? Like, what is? Okay. It? So we have twelve zodiacs, right? And we have twelve houses. Each house is where that zodiac will go, depending on um, like sometimes the planets go in the house. But there's this twelve zodiac chart. The main thing is we have 12 zodiacs. Each zodiac has its own element. There's four categories. We have, um, okay, so we have the fire signs who are the Aries, Sagittarius, um, Aries, Sagittarius, and Leo. They're fire signs. Usually, um, they're more, you could see more initiative with them with fire. So like, if I was to say, like, let's say you wanted to, um, let's say you wanted to manifest something, right? I would tell him to get a ritual candle. To, to get a ritual candle, use his candle every day, light it, because he's fire. So he's going to incorporate his own element to make his intentions happen. Where with raise an Aquarius. So I would say you need to do some breath work. You need to take in that air <laughs> element because you're already very go, 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 go. Yeah, and yeah. you're already moving like crazy. Yeah, yeah. So we need you to kind of take in some Get air. A panic <laughs> and every time you take in that air, you're going to release certain areas that are blocking you from creating this intention. So the air elements are Aquarius, Libra, and Gemini. And then we have the Earth, which is Virgo, Taurus, and Capricorn. So like for the Earth element, depending on what was going on, but most Earth elements, you will see like a lot of Earth elements are usually like cooks, some gardeners. Something that really has to give back to that element, to that that earth mineral, right? That earth situation. So, like, for somebody who's an earth element, I might tell you, like, create a, um, a plan where you're grounding um, daily or you're going out once a week or when you're cooking, you cook with your intentions, right? Like... Have you ever heard this, like, um, you don't want to eat food from a woman who's mad at you? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly food all poisoning? Latinas are mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why their food they is all right. spicy. I'm not going for a Latina. <laughs> yeah. So if you know your woman is mad at you, do not eat from her. Because she might be just saying some shit as she's this motherfucker out all night coming in at 3 a.m. Oh, I can't stand his ass. Super overcooked. So then you eat it and then now what? Ray, don't be eating. (laughs) I'm just going to go to Chipotle. All that hate, all that that energy of upset, guess what he's doing? 
He's eating it. <laughs> he's taking it in. Like this. <laughs> and then he's going to feel bad, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's going to feel like, oh, my stomach hurts or, oh, I don't feel good. or oh. So there is such a thing as saying, you know what? My my appetite went away because I'm mad or whatever. Right. It's better best not to eat because at that point you're putting that energy right back in. That energy. Right. So you pass, right. like energy gets right. passed around pretty right. much like. And, 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 and in all honesty, like the energy that you put into something is the same energy you receive. So, and you know, and like for the Zodiacs, since we're on the topic of the Zodiacs, you want to use in all honesty, your own energy element, because that energy is like the one that is really made for you. Right. Um, that's your element. That's a part of you. That's makes you so like the water signs are scorpio cancer and pisces so with water and bringing in that area of the element of the water that would be somebody who i would say like let's say they wanted to manifest or they create an intention and they were asking like what should i do i would probably tell them to take a ritual bath where each thing they place into their bath has its own intention so I'm going to put some cinnamon in my bath. I'm going to put some salt in my bath. I'm going to put some mint in my bath, depending on what it is that they're trying to create. And let them sit and bathe in that element and that intention. What are your thoughts right now with three different signs? Yeah, pretty the much room. three. Like the connection. I mean, it's, it's like for the podcast or no just, this, <laughs> just in general how like he's an earth sign well like listen for example me and oscar we've been friends for a while now he's, uh -huh. he's works here and obviously we right. podcast together and right. i feel like we get along very well right um so i mean he's i think that's what he's trying to say like, yeah should I we mean, stop hanging out no no <laughs> like i don't believe in like um like compatibility in a way yeah, compatibil compatibil oh, that's okay. the next that's so the next yeah so like when, like, I am doing, like, love chart readings, there's certain things that you look at to see if these people... Not saying that I'm in love with Oscar. Just saying the love <laughs> chart. we're compatible. Yeah, it could be... Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, but, I, but I'm just saying, lost it. like, because a lot of times you'll hear, no oh, home. like, this person's a, a, a Pisces or this person's a this. I don't date them. Yeah, like, they might go like, like them. A lot of girls right. usually do that. A lot of girls usually do that, right? But it has way more to do than just your sun sign, mm -hmm. right? So that's kind of, you know... That's the biggest red flag, you know, when a girl asks you. <laughs> yes. What, what's your horse? I had a girl <laughs> ask me, and she was like, you're an Aries? Oh, no, I don't she fuck said, with never Aries. She mind. She said, I don't fuck with the Aries. I'm like, I guess. <laughs> On to the next. <laughs> No. <laughs> he said, thank you, next. <laughs> yeah, literally. It has to do with, like, their own stuff, right? Like, maybe they had a boyfriend who was an Aries who hurt them or whatever. Well. Right? Or, you know, but for friendships, like, you'll see, like, a lot of the same Zodiacs will kind of go towards each other because that's what feels familiar. That what kind of, like, reminds them of their own energy. So, like... It's funny because, like, um, when I was doing, um, reading, like, Kanye's birth chart, because I like to read celebrities' birth chart, and then somebody said, you know, he only dates Libras. That's the only woman he dates. His girlfriend before um, Amber Rose was a Libra, Amber Rose was a Libra, and Kim was a Libra. They're all air signs. He's a Gemini. He's an air sign. So that's what he's attracted to. You know, that's why I'm like, I need to know what his new wife is. <laughs> is she a Libra too, right? Like, what, what is it, right? So you just kind of have to see where your energy flows. And like, in all honesty, like, my husband's an Aquarius. That's what I, that's, that in all honesty, because I don't like to be, Aquarius is, uh, we have a bad rap. Like, a lot of us will, detach and we need like our alone time Definitely. right 100%. so it's like if i'm with somebody who maybe is very emotional and each zodiac has its own trait so like let's say i'm with a scorpio or a cancer and they're known for having some deep emotions right that's going to drive me crazy 
So I need somebody who's like, you're good. I'm good. We do our own thing. You know what I mean? That's the kind of energy I need. You know, because, because like do your own thing and because, then come back and collapse together and then do right. your own thing, come because back. Because if I'm with somebody who's like wants to Maybe. be with me constantly or somebody who's like, oh, you know, this or that, you know, or you don't spend enough time with me, you know, or doesn't have their own thing going on, it's going to drive me crazy. I'm going to be like, whoa, that's, crazy. that's too much. You need to back up. And then this person's going to take it like, how come you don't like me? Or how come, you know, you push me away? It's not because I'm pushing you away. You just don't speak my love language, right? You're not giving me the space that I need. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and that's what, you know, and that's in all oh, honesty, man, you have to respect your own energy yeah. and you have to protect your own energy. Mm -hmm. So on the topic of um, how you were able to tell <coughs> what zodiac sign we were, mm -hmm. how, how do you go about doing that? Like what, what type of energy did we bring or... What was it about us that told you? Um, well, and that's the thing of like the difference between like an astrologer off of study and an astrologer who's like intuitive. Like, so I consider myself like an intuitive astrologer. I might not know everything about astrology. That's why I don't even say I'm an astrologer. I say that I'm an alchemist because I more am centered around the energy. Not necessarily like, oh, at this time, on this day, we're going to have Saturn go into like this full, you know, right. like, so I like it, but that's not what I study. That's, I study more the energy of what people bring mm -hmm. and how they release it. So there's certain traits that you see in certain zodiacs and subconsciously, I just pick up sometimes people's energy. So, like, I knew, like, you were an earth element. You're very grounded. I could tell right away that you're very, like, secure and stable. I got, got that instantly when I met you. I know, like, Ray, he's, like, got a lot of things going on. <laughs> That's why I was like. Welcome. <laughs> he probably got some either. I knew he was an air sign. I just couldn't. Issues. I was, I knew he wasn't a Libra. Um but I knew he was either Aquarius or a Gemini. And then when he said he was an Aquarius, I was like, I fucking knew it. Right. <laughs> like, like, you know, and, and it's just his, it's just his mannerism. Like Aquarius is, they, they're just, they like, they get bored easy. So the fact that like, you know, he has a gym, he has a podcast, he's on YouTube, like he has a lot of, you know, creation going on and it's all centered around technology that resembles Uranus, that resembles that planet. So that's why I'm like not surprised, yeah, yeah. right? Because that's something that comes easy for him. Yeah. Where for other people, they'd be like, how the fuck do I do this shit? Yeah. You know, like, and they try like multiple times and they'd be like, ah, forget it, you right. know? But for him, it comes easy. We just figure it out. Like right. When you're determined for something, I just do it. Yeah, I'll go all right. the way. If I don't right. care about it, I'm only paying attention. If I care, I'm going all the way. Like uh, Gemini's, you see a lot of Gemini's are like good singers. Like you know, they have that area of um, singing because Gemini is the ruler of the house of communication. So you see a lot of that. Like um, strong Gemini placements will have a lot of like artistic singing or i feel like i like butt that. heads with gemini's huh? all the time gemini's yeah. like i always have like issues or we're always <laughs> butting heads my be, one of my best friends he's a gemini i'm, uh -huh. I'm always pissed off at, at well, we know he's, he's always yeah. lying he's, Oscar, he's always <laughs> lying well, let's he's let's say this lying. let's say let's talk yeah. about this too like i know you're saying like obviously you knew i was in a, like well obviously like an aquarius or whatever but mm -hmm. like me as an aquarius i'm very like I don't want to say loud, but I'm very like out there. Like I don't mm -hmm. care. Like mm -hmm. I, I don't care what I say, but like right. I don't disrespect nobody. I, I right. speak. I don't care. And I yeah. see kind of that in you a little bit. Like you speak and can I cuss it here? Like I don't care. Like you know what I'm <laughs> yeah, saying? Like yeah. yeah, fuck yeah. Like let's cuss. Like yeah. it's good. Like yeah. I feel like other people could be a little bit more like, oh, uh, like I don't know if I want. You know, it's just yeah. like who cares. You know, yeah. Aquarius is, um, you know, Aquarius and my dad's an Aquarius. So like mm -hmm. another thing too, my dad's very like 
the life of the party type of guy too. Mm-hmm. Very like yeah, loud, you know. And this and is like yeah, outspoken. Yep. But he he has a business. He's right. You know he very. people respect him in that sense. And it's yep. like oh, like Aqu- Aquariuses are very smart. They're very smart zodiac. Um, and a lot of times, like the biggest downfall with Aquariuses is um, they aren't able to communicate on a personal level Mm -hmm. they're able to communicate on more of like a social level yeah um and they have that factor where like somebody will say what you're doing is weird or you're like i used to get this a lot from my kids well other moms don't um do tiktok and other moms aren't you know like Mm. um on youtube and other moms don't have a podcast and i'm like well, fuck it. Other moms. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> this is like, me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? So this is what I do. Yeah. You know? And it's like, as long as an Aquarius understands that about them and they live in that that path where they're like, this is who I am. Mm-hmm. You don't like it. That's cool. You like it. That's cool. But I'm not changing who I am. Mm-hmm. Then their energy flow is usually in a good path. Do you think... Uh, we share traits as different zodiac signs. We yes. share some yes. traits because I can be very uh, outspoken at times mm-hmm. when I believe in something, you know. Right. And uh, I'm also the type of person that believes, you know, if mm-hmm. it's making you happy, do it. Mm-hmm. Fuck it, you know. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what the hell anybody else says or thinks. So, like your birth chart is kind of like your blueprint of like when you were born and what the cosmos we're doing right so your birth chart there's planets in your birth chart all these planets basically kind of resemble the same thing it doesn't change right the way people interpret astrology changes right it's like some people will say oh well because they're a leo they have to be confident or because they're a leo that means that they're brave and courageous and stuff like that but not all leos are technically that energy right you might get a leo who has a stellium which is a majority of those planets are in one zodiac who actually maybe is more like a taurus so a taurus like might be very centered in like they're earth sign, so they might be centered in, in their ground and they might be, you know, they don't want to change for certain people. Where a Leo, you would think traditionally, should make the first step because they're brave and they're courageous. But since most of their energy is actually in Taurus, they're going to resemble a Taurus more than an actual mm-hmm. Leo. So now, like, let's say, compat- going back to compatibility, like mm-hmm. Oscars and Aries, who is... Like, what signs is he most compatible with? I'm an Aquarius. What signs right. am I yeah. more compatible? And then he's Virgo. What is he more compatible In with? In all honesty, like, you're probably drawn to, you know, probably more of... Don't tell me Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> no. Like, I, th- I feel you're like end up with you a Gemini. and a Gemini probably would, you, you want know... One, that's what... No. Yeah, they're going to put probably, you like this. But <laughs> in all honesty, like, Aries... And fire elements are usually drawn to other fire elements or earth elements. So, you know, you might have that area of, like, balance with an earth element. Um, an air element, it might, be, it might be very passionate and very, like, intense. But then you guys would have to, like, look at where it is. For instance, you would have to maybe turn down some of that energy and then they would have to turn down some of that energy because it might be too much, Mm. right? So it's like you kind of want to have an energy where you balance each other because a lot of times if you have somebody who is on an energy alignment and let's say they're all the way up here all the time, they're like here, right? And their partner's down here. You know, they, they, their energy alignment's not really like that, right? And then this partner's like, I got to come back down. 
so and then they're miserable. So maybe what he needs is a <laughs> is a water element so he, she could extinguish your flames. Yeah, you maybe so? a water. Uh, some, some you need, water, you need yeah, a bidet. Some, you know, you need a bidet I've when you take a shit. So <laughs> I've seen a lot of. Um, <laughs> With that fire I've seen a lot of <laughs> fire water and fire doing well. Um, but in all honesty, it depends on the chart. Usually what most people look at is like, I'll look at a few factors. Where's their house of partnerships? Where's their house of intimacy? Um, what, what are their moon sign versus the rising sign versus the sun sign? Sometimes you see a correlation or you see a mix, a mix match, meaning like, let's say I'm an Aquarius and then the guy I'm dating, he is a, um, he's a Sagittarius, right? But he has an Aquarius, uh, moon. So he kind of understands me, right? So we kind of like have this area where it's like, okay. So that's know. based off like when they were born. born timing. Birthday. Right. So right. even if it's like a uncompatible sign, they can have something in there that right. makes it because, understanding for you. Right. And make it because work. a <laughs> lot of times, a lot of people will have stelliums, which that means more than three planets are in one Zodiac and each planet resembles something. And then that, like I said, you, because I read your birth chart. And I want you to read that out loud. <laughs> you want me to read it out yeah, there? Yeah, we're going to go on to because I <laughs> get exposed. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, well, we want we want we want to do a real life reading so then people can see how it kind of yeah. goes. So I got I, yeah. I want to throw it out there. Like I don't care. I'm nothing to hide. Like what are they right. gonna say? Right. So what are they? Well, gonna if, say? Whenever you yeah, if you want me to read it now, I can read it. Yeah. Now, so let's or? just let's go ahead and read it now. Paul, so let me wipe your sweat. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, which okay. He needs some milk. <laughs> oh yeah. That was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's time. Keep going. Keep going. That tells you so it's time. I don't know if that was even up. <laughs> <laughs> that's hey, hey, that's how you know. <laughs> the Undertaker. Okay. So whenever you're ready. All right, we're ready. Okay. All right, so camera one, camera two. Time to expose myself. No, so, <laughs> <laughs> no, so yeah, I want to do a live reading. She's going to exp explain. I gave her. So you needed. What did you need for this so, reading? So this is his birth chart reading. And I will show you what your chart looks like this is what your chart looks like oh, okay and as um you can see that it's all over the place it's all over the place <laughs> <laughs> yeah is that what show the camera <laughs> show that camera right there uh, uh, they might not be able to see. see that but uh, it's all right it's um it's basically <clears throat> so to do a birth chart reading you're going to need the person's um birth date the location that they were born and also the time because the time really resembles the house placement, right? So, and that's which each planet, ha each planet was in during the time of the birth. And also it lets you know the ascendant. So the ascendant is also known as the rising sign. And that's a sign that is your unique sign. So that sign changes every two hours. It's the sign that the sun rises in the north northern hemisphere right because we're going off a of tropical astrology so your rising sign your sun sign your sun sign is your horoscope sign that changes every 20 what is like 30 days 28 days or something like that that's your sun sign that's like if that's like says i'm an aquarius mm -hmm. right that's your main zodiac right that's considered your soul sign your spirit sign the <coughs> sign that like a lot of people can kind of see the soul and the spirit and be like, okay, I get, I get that person, right? That person's a Gemini or yeah, they got a lot of, you know, Aquarius traits. Then we look at the moon sign and your moon sign has changed at first. Um, I thought because I didn't have your time of birth. So when you have the time of birth, the moon sign will change because you are born um, every two, so the, the moon changes every two days. So since I didn't have his time of birth, the moon sign was shifting because the moon usually shifts, you know, you have a new moon, the moon phases. So every two days, the moon travels to a new zodiac. So Ray, you're a sun in Aquarius. You have a moon in Taurus. 
and you are a Libra rising. So some of the similarities like I would look at when I was looking at somebody's um, chart like for compatibility is I like to look at the aspects um, of the, the houses. So his, which is kind of funny because you're an Aquarius in the fourth house. So, and so am I. So that lets me know that you are able to communicate very well. Um, but you do kind of hit that area where you don't want to maybe communicate on personal things. You communicate well to the collective, which is the outside, the social sources, not necessarily maybe, um, the house, the house, right. And maybe people in the house, you might kind of you know, shy away from some of that communication. Um, also what stands out too with that is that you are very spiritual and you have an essence of wanting to learn more. And also you have an essence of a lot of achievements. So achievements that we look at when we see an Aquarius in the fourth house, for some people, they'd be like, Hey, you know, you have a business, you got all this going on, you've achieved a lot. And like for you, you're like, but I'm not done. I'm just getting started. So that's kind of what the Aquarius in the fourth house resembles. Um, Also, your parents have literally shaped who you are. A lot of it, and probably with the masculine energy with your dad, a lot of it goes back to with your dad and you'll see like a lot of guidance and a lot of areas where you're like kind of balancing out like what you believe versus like what he believes as we were both born the same day (laughs) yes both born the same day that's that's funny my mom's an aquarius too um so the moon in taurus is in your eighth house your eighth house is areas of intimacy, also areas of grief, and sometimes can be a shadow state. So that lets me know that sometimes you get very stubborn and frustrated where maybe people are asking you to change in certain elements and you just don't. And that's that's your own emotional experiences and that's basically how you... Um, take in your own emotions and you have to protect your own energy. So it's almost like it might feel very strong to people where it feels like abrupt and they're like, okay, you don't ever compromise. And it's not that you don't compromise. It's just you are protecting your own energy. Um, And... And definitely you have a lot of concerns towards the spiritual world where maybe you're on this reflection of what happens like death, right? And a lot of people, that is a topic that's very hard for many people. It's the number one topic that nobody wants to talk about. Talking about dying? Dying. Like once it ends? Right. Yeah, because I got so much, to me, I feel like I got so much to achieve and that it's like, oh my God, I'm getting older. Like, I want to get to where I want to get and it's like, if I die, I die. Then it's like, what well, now? You know what I'm <laughs> but saying? That's, yeah. But but achievements aren't. <clears throat> the soul doesn't see achievements. Yeah, yeah. The, the more soul experiences. sees experiences, love, memories. Why I like to travel. Right. Mm-hmm. Memories and areas of feelings of emotion. Mm-hmm. And you keep going back to that emotion of, what if I don't achieve this all? But that's not what the soul is asking you to do. So your areas of emotion is centered on an area of fear because you're scared you're not going to be able to achieve it all. But once you let go of that fear, it's going to flow to you very naturally where the flow is just going to feel aligned. Mm. And what you're meant to achieve, you will achieve. As long as you're in this energy of space that feels like you can let go of that fear because you probably already achieved a lot. I mean, for you, it might not feel complete, but Mm -hmm. 
um, it's not what you as the mind thinks, it's what the soul thinks. Yeah. And then we're going to talk about um, the Mercury. So you have a, and it was funny because we were talking about this before. So he has what we call a stellium. And a stellium is basically a majority of planets are all in the third house. And he has four planets and his north node which is a destiny node, are all together. And he has his Mercury, which is how socially you kind of work with, like, technology, your awareness, your intellectual um, placements, and also with the community. Um, And then you have your Saturn, in your third house and the third house is really like the house of a lot of family and of a lot of roots with like the family and communication and talking and being in this energy of siblings and um, circumstances and you also have Uranus in your third house and you have your north node, which is kind of like your destiny house. And this is where you want to like see your placements of commitments and people and reflections, right? So this is considered a stellium. And the fact that it's in Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. And Saturn is the karmic energy planet. So a lot of energy that comes from Saturn is in your chart. So a lot of times you put out a lot of, um, I guess you could say you put out like a lot of energy and you put it out, put it out, put it out. And people might sometimes take from it. And then they aren't fully aligned with, for whatever reasons, their own issues. Right. Mm -hmm. So there might be like karmic energy tied into that where like, if they do you wrong (laughs) like there's there's two zodiacs you don't do wrong and when you think of astrology and areas of um saturn saturn is the boss in a lot of circumstances saturn is the boss he rules capricorn which is known as like the ceo of zodiacs right when we think of saturn saturn is that energy of karma, that energy of restrictions, freedoms, boundaries, and responsibilities. So you live in a lot of that presence, right? So if somebody does something that's out of like your boundaries or out of the energy that you've already given, and then let's say they step out of that energy alignment and kind of like do hateful things or do things that the karma starts to come back, right? It's going to come back to them unintentionally. So, like, you're kind of like one of those people, like, you could cut ties with somebody who does you wrong, and you're just like, whatever. Yeah. And then Sa- and then Saturn's like, no, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. And we all get it back without well, you unintentionally. Saturn, yeah. Saturn's that energy that, like, Take yeah. somebody by the neck and is like, you remember me? Remember that time? You stole all my shit? Yeah. Remember that? And then kind of like, because this is what it is. The energy that you put out is the same energy you receive. So in a lot of areas of like um, people who are trying to repay debts, because we all make mistakes, right? And we all do things that maybe... You know, we were living living in our shadow element or we were unsecure about our own energy alignment and maybe, you know, like we stole some shit or whatever, right? We repay that debt back to Saturn. So it's basically like in certain places of India, they have a temple that's dedicated to Saturn Mm. because people will go and say, Saturn, I fucked up. I'm sorry. (laughs) You know, like, so it's very much the karmic um, energy planet. What's the other uh, zodiac sign that is like Saturn? You said the, you said that there was two. There's two. So Saturn rules. So traditionally, 
before Uranus or um, was discovered, I think it was like in the 1800s, um, Saturn ruled Aquarius and Capricorn. And Capricorn is, a lot of Capricorns are very karmic. Like a lot of people, um, okay, you guys know of Andrew Tate? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. Top G? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's the GOAT. Right. That's the GOAT. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're, all <going laughs> We're all going bald. We're all going bald. That's, that is a true fact. <laughs> okay. So, do you guys know of Gretchen Thun- Thunderbird? Is that Thun- that young girl? The, the yeah. young girl? Yeah. I think the I've seen the her activist, years. the environmentalist, right? Mm-hmm. So, the story goes... Andrew Tate, who's a Sagittarius, who's very fiery. So he doesn't think before he does shit. He just does shit, right? So he decided, you know, I'm going to mess with this uh, activist. I'm going to go on her Twitter and um, post, you know, I got all these cars and they're all like super high in oil emission and like, you know, fuck the environment, right? So, (laughs) So he goes and he does this tweet. On her, like he, you know, he mentions her and he... On her feed, huh? Does this tweet, right? So so Gretchen, she's like 19 too, right? So she's like, oh, wow, I would love to hear about this. Send me an email at www.smalldickenergy.com, right? So she's like, fuck you, right? So Andrew's like, oh, no, no, no. No, girl. No, girl. I got to have the last laugh. So then he decides I'm going to get these, you know, get my pizza boxes and I'm going to do the, you know, we'll smoke my cigar and I'm going to let you know that like who, who has the small dick, you or me, right? You or me, you know, and he basically calls her out and he does this huge video about like, like, don't come for me, girl, you know, like you don't want to mess with me. Right. So, when he did that video, he didn't know that the Romanian police were looking for him, right? For sex trafficking or whatever he was doing, right? So those pizza boxes that he used in that video, what, oh, and then he said, and I'm not going to recycle these pizza boxes. Okay. Hmm. F you and the environment, right? So those pizza boxes that he used, the Romanian police were able to track down his location and arrest him. Mm. Gretchen responded with, that's why you recycle your pizza boxes after she found out he got arrested. Gretchen is a Capricorn. She didn't even have to do shit. But Saturn is looking up and he's like, you don't mess with my girl. Mm. You don't mess with my people. Guess what, Andrew? Here's a big of karmic energy to you. And it happened instantly. Well, he went out of his way to karma. He went out of his way to be disrespectful. Well, he went out of his way to be disrespectful. We didn't even have to do that. He could just think that if he wanted to, but don't say it out there to the public. Right. You got to kind of watch your tongue, you know, no sense. To someone in general. What what is Andrew Tate again? He's a Sagittarius. Is. I mean, because you know how Trump just kind of says anything too. Is he? He's a Gemini. I believe he's a Gemini. Oh, he's a Gemini. Yeah. So I'm I'm thinking they must be kind of like, right? Very, yeah, very mouthy. I believe Trump is a Gemini. Yes. Yeah. I believe so. So that was everything on my reading. Oh. Oh, Okay. You also have a Venus in Aquarius. Oh, we cap it off with that and then. Yeah, because you don't want everybody to know all your business. Oh, but I do want to tell you. You you can 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 expose it all. So. You have a Jupiter in Leo, and that's in your 10th house. And this energy is really like the vitality of who you are in expanding um, areas. And Jupiter doesn't go into a planet, but uh, I mean, Jupiter doesn't go into a zodiac, but every 12 years. So the next Jupiter in Leo return will be in um, 2028. Okay, so during that time, I wouldn't be surprised if you don't create something really big, like maybe another business or a different type of um, like area to work in or a different type of achievement, possibly, you know, I don't know, another kid, you know, I 
don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Wife. But it is, you know, it is the leader area. So Well, I think this is why we started this podcast to push the the brand and push everything we do. And I feel like we've been getting some good feedback recently. And I feel like this is going to help allow me it's to fast. reach as many people as we can to create other right. things. Yeah. And so it could be five years from now. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Okay. Mm. I like that. I like that. So, I mean, everything you said just kind of like, to me, I feel like it was right on spot. It just, it made sense. So I guess that's a perfect example. If you want to get your reading to understand a little bit about yourself, um, don't hesitate to reach out to Catherine. She does all that. Um, appreciate your time here. Any last You're things welcome. that we want to say? I guess we won't get to see you exposed. Is there more things on there that maybe I don't want to put? Well, I'm not talking about. Is there some more things on there that you could say that could be maybe exposing myself? Do you think? Exposing I don't know. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah, well, I'm kidding. Kidding. I mean, not exposing, but is there more things on there that you haven't, you didn't say? A little say? more personal, I guess. A little bit more personal. I mean, in all honesty, most people usually ask me a question. Like, that's, you know, like, what would the question be? Like, um, what it is that you felt like you would need to be exposed about? No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> so I, oh, so I can tell you. Not here so today. I can tell you. So I can tell you. So I can like, be like, based like, off what you said, I can be like, well, this is this, and you can right because that's like a pretty general reading. Yeah. Like, but usually when people sign up a reading with me, usually if it's like astrology or tarot, they usually come with like questions, like. Mm. Am I going to get a job? Like, will I always like a, be single? <laughs> will I always maybe, be single? Maybe. That's a big question. When will I get married? Yeah. Um, one girl asked me that. When I'll get married, I was like, you're already engaged. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, yeah, I know. but eh. I'm like, well, you don't want to marry him, right? She's like, ah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Dang. Damn, she, was, uh, yeah, she didn't want to get married. <laughs> yeah. And she was already engaged. <laughs> she was already, you know. Seeing how she could squeeze herself out. Out of, out of that relationship. No, that was yeah. la toxica. Sometimes you just got to be honest. Right. Sometimes yeah. you just have to, you know, and that's like a lot of the questions. Is this person the right one for me? And I, and it, and so you're the, lo so you're lot the, you're the, lo that I you're the love guru. Yeah. Huh? You're the love guru. Love guru. You know, and in awesome. all honesty, I Maybe. feel like people she honestly know that answer before they even ask me. They know, but it's they're asking you for, they need right. that confirmation. Right. They need uh, that confirmation. And a lot of time it's like, you know, yes I, I or, think if you or gotta no. I think if you got to question it, I think you already know the answer. If you got to question, right. you know, you know. If you got to right. question it, then no, it's not. You yeah. know, it's just an attack. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so there you get that from the take that from that. If you gotta ask if that person's for you or whatever the case would be, right. then you know then the answer not is not. You. You, don't, you shouldn't right. have to question it. You know, yeah. and, and then I get questions like, is he ever gonna ask me to marry him? That's a <laughs> we big We were just one. talking about that with how why do guys wait? That was the last podcast. I feel like it's just that energy for me, you know, like I have to like keep like getting to know the person. If the energy doesn't match after long periods of time, I'm just right. like, I guess it's not right. And I I mean most people you know, I think some women or relationships, you know, I know like some women have like timelines, right? Mm. And it's like, you're not marrying the timeline, you're marrying that so, individual, yeah, yeah. you know? And they're like, by this age, I want to be married by this age. Some people, just, kids, some, some people are just fixated. Age. I think they have their, their right. whole life plan. It's like sometimes things yeah. don't work that way. They, they don't not like that. You know, sometimes yeah. you end up with somebody and maybe they don't, ask you to marry them and then you have to come to that ultimatum like is this like do i need the marriage mm. to be happy yeah. with this person or do i want the marriage and the commitment where it's now my turn to say okay let me walk away mm. and then if that person decides like hey i'm gonna lose this person mm. now i should really think about maybe i do want to keep them as a companion mm -hmm. which means marriage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know or it means don't get married you know yeah partnership nice. so what we mm -hmm. take a, what what we take away from this that i uh don't fuck with me guys because i'm not gonna do that to you it's just gonna come back to you <laughs> you hear that Saturn's i am a nice guy back. i give my good energy out to the people i try to help everybody out don't fuck me over there you go please i don't want to yeah. do i don't want to cause no trouble not even you know i just want to be a normal guy chill die uh and then in five years, like I said, in five years, which is five years, that's when you say you wouldn't be surprised if something. So, I mean, maybe, like I said, I'm going to keep that in mind. Obviously, I'm going to keep doing what I do. And I do feel like I'm, I'm going to do something more. And right. it's just, again, it's got to take time. This business I've been doing has been over 10 years. And uh, 
like you said, five years from now, it's about where and business becomes. Another person, I mean, like him or, you know, not like him, whatever, but another person who has that uh, energy alignment is Gavin Newsom's. Mm. And I wouldn't be surprised in 2028 if he was running for presidency. Oh, sure. Imagine Gavin Newsom's the president in 2020. <laughs> right. No comment. <laughs> no right. comment. Right. All right. But I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if something happens with his political mm -hmm. career, if he's like either running for presidency or, or he's because that Jupiter is very much centered on a, mm. a, abundance and expansion. Wow. So okay. somewhere there's that growth element so you need a candle. <laughs> need I need to practice breathing. And what was his feet on the ground, or was it, what was your? Yeah, feet in the ground. Put your feet in the dirt, in the mud. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Another episode of Los this podcast. You can find Catherine on social medias. What is your social medias and your uh, podcast? Everything is chakras and cuss words. Um, my website is chakrascusswords dot com. You know, um, there wasn't very many cuss words today. Yeah, there no. wasn't. <laughs> Maybe we funny. should redo this. <laughs> should we end it with a cuss word? Beep. <laughs> no, no, Beep. All right, then Oscar Benitez right here. Let him know where you can find you. Oscar Benitez underscore 12 on Instagram. Samuel at Renteria underscore Samuel. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ray Gonzalez, three C's at the end. TikTok, Instagram. <laughs> Follow us on his podcast. This will be on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Subscribe, like, comment, share it. We're just trying to send the message out to people. See you guys on the next episode. All right, we out.